I'm a science teacher. <laughs> so this is the first time um, that I have taught uh, an entire book, uh, a, a nonfiction text to a class. And I was really worried about it. My kids struggle with language learning differences. So I really wanted to develop a class called bioethics. Um, and in this class, we we're going to read nonfiction texts that have to do with ethical and biological dilemmas. I really wanted them to be able to access primary sources because those kids are going to be going off to college. Um, but I was worried about it. So I, I went and talked to a bunch of our English teachers and then what my, my awesome English teaching team said over and over again was, number one, make sure you are making them use the audio. Do a couple of lessons where you are listening as a class together um, and, then, and then sort of let them go. And so I had a couple of kids who were resistant to it um, and pulling them aside, having one-on-one -on -one conversations like, look, I know you don't think you need this because you are wicked smart and you are, but this is, might really up your comprehension. We might really be able to get you to the next level. And that's what I want for you. Um, so unlocking that audio. But then another suggestion that I got from them was having group discussions. Um, and this has sort of evolved with technology. So yes, you can sort of have a Socratic seminar and we definitely do that with our kids with books. It's helpful for them to sort of speak their mind. Um, but, uh, it, I've evolved that into having these online forums that can be very overwhelming, but I've actually used, uh, Google forms as a way to do this. Um, so giving the kids a question early in the morning or late at night, um, it's just a simple you know, one line question about what we're going to be talking about in the book the next day. That gives them an opportunity again, ding, it comes to their phone. Um, and for one student, he found this so helpful because he was really struggling in our Socratic discussions on getting in. He was like, I'm thinking so much about your question that I can't get in sideways here. I can't, I, I kids are jumping in and I'm still in my thought process. So the fact that I could give him the question earlier in the day um, was allowing him the thought time. Um, also, he was able to respond. They need to respond uh, via text. So they're using their phone. So they're walking through the halls during the day and they are texting their response on the phone. That response will come to me. I can read it. And then by the time they get into class, we can have a fuller discussion. This this question that you think that I'm just sending to you as like busy work throughout the day, I'm not. It's actually to help you think about it, be ruminating on it so that you have time and space to form a, a really great answer to it. For more information about effective assistive and instructional technology, please visit ctdinstitute.org. Funding for this video is provided by the Center on Technology and Disability through a grant from the United States Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs.